Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Um, uh, Seku Sundiata used to uh, end his emails and many of his other missives with the phrase, um, all of a sudden, um, rather than take care or have a good day. So all of a sudden, here we go. Um, uh, the great uh, writer, Seamus Heaney, who passed away a couple of weeks ago, once said that there are some poets who just jolt the thing alive by putting our hand on the bare wire of the present. And I would suggest that Seku Sundiata was one of those poets. Um, my name is Cecilia Rubino. I'm the coordinator of the Lang Theater Program. Um, Seku taught at Lang College uh, for 20 years, and I had the great good luck of collaborating with him on a number of projects, including working with him um, the last year uh, that he was at the New School in 2006, 2007, on the course, uh, the America Project course. Um, and many of Seku's former students are here today. Um, but I'd like to, I'm gonna put my glasses on to make sure I do this right, so. Um, but welcome to those of you that are not from the New School. We welcome you here and to everyone to um, the America Project Remixed, um, a symposium that we hope is a little bit different about to engage Sheku's work and his research to performance methodology. Um, uh, this is gonna be a day where we talk to one another, hopefully you meet some uh, fellow artists, uh, educators, citizens, and activists. Um, and I'd like to introduce my colleagues uh, who helped put this symposium together. Um, Gabrielle Benedir Viani. Gabrielle, are you here? There she is, thank you. Um, who is the Assistant Director of Civic Engagement Initiatives um, at the New School for Public Engagement and the Director of Buscata. Um, Rasu Gila Gianni. Jelani, thank you so much, who is um, part of MAP International. Um, Brian Lewis, who is here, who is now, uh, who is a former student of Sekou's, is now my colleague, uh, a professor at Lang College as well. And I'd like to turn the microphone over to Anne Rosenthal, a great friend of Sekou's, and the director of MAP International that has uh, created uh, this whole retrospective on Sekou's work called Blink Your Eyes. Thank you, Cecilia. Well, it's really, um, Great to be back here at the New School. We s launched the retrospective on April 2nd here in this very room, and so it's really great to be back. Thank you, New School friends, and Jennifer especially. Um, so uh, just a few words about um, Sekou and the America Project. He, this is exactly the kind of day that Sekou would have um, created. Uh, with his America Project. We, uh, MAP was a, worked with Sekou as his producer for about 10 years, and um, he had a really transformative impact on our organization and in terms of how an artist can impact and change um, people's thinking and the way that we see the world. Um, the last project he worked on was uh, started in the aftermath of 9-11, and Sekou was really questioning what it meant to be a citizen and what it meant to him to be a citizen of a country that he was had a long history of being angry at. Um, and he felt like he could only answer those questions by engaging other people, other Americans. And so we embarked on um, several years, actually four years of research, what he called research to performance, where he went into public communities and invented forms that we're gonna be practicing here today, the citizenship dinner, community sings, and poetry circles, where people could really speak from the heart, not from the top of their head about a particular political issue but really engage um, what they have in common as citizens as um, of this country and of the world. Um, that was his vision and that led to the creation of his final performance work, The 51st Dream State. Um, when he, he was in the process really of creating he wanted to leave a mark of this project around the country so that it would live on in communities after he left those communities. And we at MAP, after he passed away in 2007, were really committed to um, 
to, to uh, realizing that dream of his. And among the handouts that you have is the America Blue Book, which is um, Sekou's intention to publish, how he brought his thinking into the classroom, and also a video that you'll see uh, soon of the, the process that he went through to make the 51st Dream State. Um, and that he, he was a catalyst, as Cecilia said, and he catalyzed us to keep, these, uh, keep this work going of, of the role of the artist in social change. And, um, and after several years, we really felt that we could still feel his impact and still there were so many issues in the world that um, we always thought, you know, Sekou spoke about this years ago. And so we really wanted to revisit his work on the work that he created on the stage, the work that he made in the classroom with students here at the New School and elsewhere, and, um, and his many bands, etc. And so we did create a retrospective, Blink Your Eyes, Sekou Sundiata Revisited, which has been going on since April and continues until October. And it's brought people, it's really been um, so encouraging how people have uh, responded. Some people have been coming to almost all of the events. They, um, uh, some people are brand new to Sekou's work, as well as people who were connected to Sekou um, over many years, and still finding really fresh meaning. And that's the point of this retrospective and the point of today, is to keep these ideas moving forward and see how we all in our own practices can, um, uh, can fulfill Sekou's vision in many ways. And in addition to your handout, I just wanted to mention that we also published a catalog uh, for the retrospective that has a lot of Sekou's poems um, and journal entries and incredible photographs and essays by others who worked with him, including Jane Lazar, who was um, one of the people who brought him to the new school. So check it out outside. And thank you very much. And I'm really happy to introduce Rasu Jelani, who's our Director of Community Programs and who's our um, brains behind this <laughs> day on Map Freehab. Hello, everyone. Um, good morning. And uh, Anne spoke a bit about being a citizen, um, and that was Sekou's, you know, his research in the uh, America Project methodology. So taking that same idea and, and using it for today is that you all are citizens of today. And um, this symposium is about you, it's not about us and we need to honor that. And the way we can honor that is to make sure that we all have someone sitting next to us, either to our left or to our right, and what we wanna do is acknowledge each other. Um, there may be things that may not have you present today, and we wanna get that out the way, all right? So um, I know you're kind of like in an island, so let's find a friend. For, oh, but she has some with her. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no problem. So we wanna, we wanna create connection, we wanna create, um, possible collaboration and community and citizenship. And a way to do that is not to be on an island. So we're gonna figure this out and we're gonna sit next to someone. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna spend one minute and you get to, you get to talk about yourself, right? You're gonna spend one minute and just say what you do. Um, uh, who you, well, first of all, who you are, what you do, and what, what are your expectations for today, right? So you have one minute. And then after that one minute, I'm going to tell you stop, even if you're in mid-sentence, and we're going to switch over to the next person. Cool? Got one minute. Time. Time. All right, I have a question. Is there anyone that does not have someone to talk to because we just had a young lady walk in and maybe she could be the person you talk to so is there anyone who's in threes or in an island right oh okay i'll talk to her all right cool all right so now we're going to switch and the person that was the receiver is now the giver all right so you're going to talk about yourself
<laughs> All right, we can stop talking now. Did we get it out? You feel better? Do you have the Holy Spirit? Okay, cool. Well, I met Lacante. She is a professor of public health at Downstate. She's also a poet, and she, she's here because she's interested in learning uh, some type of practice or methodology that can help her in teaching and engaging, all right? So that's my spiel. I'm out of here. Um, Gabrielle. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Rasu. And, and thank you all for introducing each other and yourselves to each other, something like that. Um, I think we're going to, I just want to sort of introduce the, the framing questions for today. Um, we really do want to have today be a useful day in thinking about your practice. Um, and really that's part of what we're trying to do is model different ways of doing this work and kind of give you tools and resources for thinking about it. Um, so the things that, the kind of framing questions that, that we'd like to kind of keep thinking about throughout the course of the day are, how do you create public projects? How do you form diverse partnerships? Um, and how do you inspire dialogue, right, in creative practice, in pedagogy, in lots of other kinds of ways? Um, and to introduce those questions, I want to bring in a few more voices um, and introduce a project that is going to be a place where uh, some of what happens today is going to live as well, and, and something that I want to be a resource for all of you going forward. Um, so this is the America Project Public Exchange. This is a second part of a project that was a collaboration between my organization, MAP. Uh, my organization, MAP. I'm just <laughs> showing MAP, apparently. Um, MAP and my organization, Buscata. Um, we worked for a long time to develop the guide that you guys have in your hands, um, kind of building off of the work that Sekou did as a teacher at the New School and thinking about how that work could be reinterpreted, opened up for people to use and change and reinterpret in their own practices. Um, and the public exchange is the kind of next stage of that. And it's an online site where we have um, brought together basically people thinking about these questions um, and talking about their own practices. Um, and we really hope that it can be a place and a resource for all of you and a place that you can start to contribute to as well and share your work um, as you do this kind of work. And so really what it's about is about process. It's not so much about uh, you know finished projects, but it's about the idea of, well, how do you grapple with some of these big questions? And maybe what are the challenges in doing that? Um, so to introduce these questions, I want to bring in a few voices from the public exchange. Um, the first one, sort of thinking about the how do we make public projects, I want to introduce uh, Brad Learmonth um, from Harlem Stage, and he's going to talk um, about some very practical aspects of, of working in public. You do have to have a sense of flexibility in, in, and the ability to compromise or let go of that control, which sometimes could be pride or it could be we know what's best for you. So. We suffer a lot from, there's, there are a lot of people in, in our community that love what we do, but there's a lot of people that don't. They think we're elitist because we're doing stuff that's a little more experimental or cutting edge or whatever. So. Um, Instead of us just saying, well, I'm sorry you don't get it, but, you know, it's too bad for you. It's really about how do we get them to get it? How do we get them to feel something different than, than that we're trying to set ourselves apart from them and show them a better way? I think it's the, I think it's the job of the arts to expand people's possibilities. That might be showing them a better way but it might just be expanding the way they're already on. Time. We, oh, good example. We created a series called Uptown Nights uh, last year, huge success. But it's largely for a younger crowd, and it's kind of like going to Le Poisson Rouge or something where there's low seats, there might be someone on the periphery. Everybody's standing around as a DJ, there's you know, rock and music, Van Hunt, <laughs> something like that. So we took out the seats. Well, people didn't see us that way. Mm. So no matter who you were presenting or how much it was a dance party, they wanted to sit down. So we brought in some seats, but not seats for everybody. 
Well, that created a whole big problem because the young people would sit down and then we have these poor old people come in that really <laughs> needed to sit down and there were no seats. So we're like, we were adamant about it. We were trying to figure out how do we message this so that they get it. And it's like, why aren't you reading our material? Um, and, and we just finally said, okay, you know what? They don't see us like that. So let's just put seats in. And if they want to dance, we'll move the damn seats out of the way. And so that's what we've been doing. Uh, I don't know if that's a great example, but it's a way of us trying to listen to our audiences and, and partner with them and say, okay, you know, we're really not making you happy here with the seating situation, but you love the work, the art. So how can we make you happier in the space? So now, of course, that we have seats, they're all like, well, where are we going to dance? <laughs> So if you guys want to dance today, we'll move the seats. Um, so secondly, we want to ask, um, how do you create diverse creative partnerships? And to kind of introduce that, that idea, I want to turn to um, a very different organization. This is Shana Berger and um, Nathan uh, Perath from the Coleman Arts Center in York, Alabama, talking about an object that uh, really epitomizes the intention behind their work. And it's a, quite a surprising object and kind of relates to the way in which they relate to their community. One day I was uh. walking, I was, I think I was going to pay the water bill and uh, somebody honked at me and it was a city worker, a uh, sanitation worker, uh, sort of flagged me down and said he had something for me and it was uh, an old art history, art history book that he had pulled out of the trash that somebody had thrown away. And he'd been saving in this truck for a week or so until he saw Shane or myself and uh, wanted to give it to us. So I think that would be sort of... I'm so glad you thought of that, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. There was like one thing, so... And we still have it, like, in our office, just... Mm -hmm. So, and what was that? What, can you explain some of what that interchange was about? Or oh, I mean, I feel like it... Um, just the the nature of a, the small town that we're in is so like relationships are kind of what there is maybe mm -hmm. more than institutions or I'm not sure I'm not exactly sure how to answer that yeah. but it was just it was thoughtful and it was like this um, yeah I just I like the gesture yeah for me I think it's maybe that you know people are, the idea that somebody would be eager to bring something to us is like, maybe classifies like what I hope we're doing, like more than, I think a lot of times people think like, oh, we work in kind of a disadvantaged area and we're trying to like use art to improve things and that like implies something about us being these great people trying to help everybody else. And to me, that's like certainly not what the experience has been just because uh, such a great sense of gratitude for getting to work there and feel like the community gives so much to us and for me like the people that we work with have made they've made me like love art and think that it's meaningful which a lot of times I don't so um. Um, so so I hope maybe we'll think things are meaningful <laughs> um, and lastly Thinking about the idea of how do you inspire dialogue in these multiple ways, um, gonna embarrass Anne, um, <laughs> but um, introduce uh, Emily Harney of MAP, who's gonna talk a little bit about the um, kind of reflecting on Tat Futan's process of making people feel welcome and making a space for dialogue uh, through MAP's projects of the People's Potlucks, which happened two years ago, I believe, um, and in which. Um, as, a, as an artist host, he asked people to bring uh, ingredients as part of a kind of people's potluck, citizenship dinner, builds off some of the models that we'll talk about today that, that Seiku started. I'm thinking of Tafu's dinner at his studio where um, just, just being in his own home was like a was a starting point for that i feel like for that generosity he invited people into his own home when you arrived he provided you with a drink and um took your took the ingredients that that he asked people to bring and took everyone's portrait as they came in and there were sort of some steps to make you feel appreciated and then 
when he started his, when we actually finally sat down for the conversation at that dinner, he started with his own, um, with his own questions mm -hmm. and his own um, thoughts and then asked people to reflect upon those. So we hope that today that we will make all of you feel appreciated and make space for hearing all of your voices about all of these kinds of questions and that it can be a place for exchange and conversation and ways of thinking about the very different, I think, uh, kinds of practices that are in this room today. So um, I'm gonna turn it back and bring it back to Sekou and Sekou's practice um, to introduce uh, the screening of uh, Finding the 51st Dream State, which is the process of making the, the kind of research to performance process that Anne talked about earlier. Um, it's a documentary about that process and about the kind of larger America project that Sekou started, which was all of these community conversations and, and many, many pieces, many moving parts, many different collaborators, um, which came together in the performance, uh, the 51st Dream State which Matt produced um, and premiered at the BAM in what year? 2006, okay. Um, so without further ado, we're gonna screen the film and also just as an opening, it, it brings together many of the different kinds of pieces and projects and strategies that we're gonna try and enact today in different ways, so.